Okay, so we all struggle with centering from the very beginning. Whenever I have people who say they've done this before, come to the studio, I say, can you center clay? And they said, eh. And I say, well, let's start you at the beginning. It can take months, it can take weeks, but it very rarely takes days to learn how to center. And what we've all learned is that centering is the core of everything that we do. If we don't get the clay right in the center, then we can't put our hole in it in the center, and then one side becomes thicker than the other. Then we got the bagel where it's puffier on one side and crunchy on the other. For a bagel, that's wonderful. For a pot, not so much. So I'm gonna give you sort of my way on how it clicked for me 30 years ago. Um, it's not necessarily a strength thing. I was um, 40 pounds lighter 30 years ago, and uh, it was all about leverage of my body. So we're gonna start right now. This is a two pound ball of clay. I am not gonna wet my bat. I'm gonna um, make sure that bat is dry. This is actually a plastic bat which takes a little bit more work because you've got to make sure that you push down. I'm always going to start with something that looks like an avocado, a Yukon Gold potato, or Grimace from McDonald's. And I'm going to slap that right in the middle. Now, when you turn your wheel on, if it's not in the center, stop, move it. Why make your life harder? So if it's over here and it does that, don't bother. Move it right into the center. So I'll give it a little slap like that. I never want to go flat like this. And that's because if I decide to cone that clay up, if I go flat, that's going to create that volcano. So hands wet. First, I want to set myself up. Get yourself a brick under your left foot. Some people are a little short torso. They may need two bricks. Um, we have this pelvis bone here. I'm not making any more children. So I'm going to use it just for pottery. I'm going to lock my elbow into my pelvis bone with my arm up against the core of my body. I'm gonna have my hand at this right angle and I'm gonna push this heel of my hand between six and seven o'clock on the clay. So that's right in front of you. I am not gonna touch the clay with my fingers at all. I'm gonna push with my actual hip bones. So it's sort of this motion right here. My other hand is gonna be on my elbow, is gonna be on my leg. I'm gonna be karate chopping on the top and my hands are gonna be attached. I don't wanna go all the way across here because I don't want this divot in the, my clay. I'm gonna start with my wheel going about 75 miles an hour and I'm not pushing from the back. My elbow is pushed, my right elbow is pushed into my right thigh and I'm just gonna push down with the top of my hand gently so that now the clay is stuck. Now I'm gonna start with full speed. The heel of my hand is gonna push between six and seven at the same exact time that my top hand is pushing down. Notice my fingers are not touching the clay. I'm gonna add some more water. I want you to notice how my top hand is not all the way across. It's back here. I almost want this first knuckle here to be in the center and then I drop my wrist to sort of create this rounded shape. This is gonna give me pressure from the top and a little bit of pressure from the side, which is gonna be super important when you're getting to bigger clay. I don't have my fingers on the side. If I put my fingers on the side, I tend to loosen up this tension and my hand's just gonna sort of jump around like this. So again, I'm just pushing with my left hip bone towards the middle of the clay and I'm pushing down with my top hand. My hand gets dry, I loosen up both hands and I go right back in. Now, ideally, you could probably hang out like this for a while. And if you don't move, don't do this. But if you just sort of hang out just like this, and you have nicely wedged clay, you could probably slowly take your hands off, wipe this away, and call it centered. If you're struggling with that, and that's not really um, ideally what's going on, okay? Let's say you make a few errors. Let's say that you push on the side at one point and now it's like doing that sort of craziness. Well, now you're gonna recorrect yourself. You're gonna push back here. You're gonna push down. So remember your top hand is telling the clay how high you want that mound to be and your back hand is telling it how wide. So if I was to push down with my top hand and loosen up a little with my back hand, it's gonna go wider. If I go in with my back hand and loosen up on my top hand, it's gonna go taller. And remember, your mound of clay is gonna determine what you're gonna be making. So if you're gonna be making a bowl, you wanna go wide and flat. If you're gonna make something cylinder, you wanna go tall and narrow. So let's say a lot of people will end up with like the Guggenheim, I call it. So that means that their back hand is angled just a little bit like that. That's ideally not okay. 
So we wanna make sure that our back hand is perpendicular to the uh, wheel head to the back. And now I'm gonna go ahead and push in with my heel and my hands. And I wanna fix this sort of lumpy part here. So I'm gonna take these parts of my finger, I'm gonna angle them down, and I'm just gonna slowly squish this clay down into here. But I'm not gonna loosen up this tension rod between my clay and my hip bone. So see, I'm just gonna wrap those fingers around. You see how I filled in that Guggenheim entrance? And then I'm slowly gonna take my hands off. A big mistake people do is they'll be centering, they think it's centered, and they go like that. That's gonna throw it off center. So this is with two pounds, so I'm not necessarily gonna say you have to cone up. Um, maybe another video I'll go. Now, what's your ideal shape? I like to start with sort of this, this sort of cat food can rounded top bottom. If you leave too much clay down here, you're gonna end up leaving it on the bat when you start to pull. So I like this sort of right angle on the side. So again, I'm just gonna hang out here. And slowly take my hands off. Now, how do you know it's centered? Well, I literally just take my hand and I put it on top like that. And if my hand isn't wobbling, then I know it's centered. Now your top may be centered, but your bottom's not. So you wanna make sure that you have your fingers all the way around. Another thing I'll do is I will literally draw a circle around the perimeter of my mound of clay. And if that dark line looks like the black hole that's not moving, the void in the universe, then you know that that's not centered. So there you go. I'm gonna follow this up with another video on how to center using coning up processes. Um, hope that helped. Centering really is the most important thing and there really is no such thing as almost centered especially not spiritually and mentally so have a great day if you're um going to practice this why don't you center one ball of clay move it to the side center another ball of clay move it to the side just like you're at a golf course or at a tennis court just want to keep on doing the same thing over and over and it'll click let me know what other videos you want to see and thanks for subscribing and thanks for sharing have a great centered day but i'm bummed